The I-Pace was meant to be the start of a new electric era for Jaguar, but since it came out six years ago, guess how many electric cars they've released? That's right, none. Zero. Jaguar is going to release a few new EVs in 2025, proper fancy ones at that. But before that happens, this thing is going to the big EV recycling plant in the sky. Jaguar is hitting Control-Alt-Delete on its electric plans, having a big reset, and the I-Pace will be no more. But hold on a second, because this thing is still for sale. It's still being pitted up against the likes of the Tesla Model Y, and it looks really good. But the question is, can it hold its own in 2024? Before we start, if you're here because you're thinking about getting an iPace, you can lease a brand new one right now and for a great price at AutoTrader Leasing. AutoTrader can also help you get a great deal when you buy and sell your car. So check out the links in the description. Also, if you want to know what your current car is really worth, our easy valuations tool will tell you in seconds. We check millions of vehicles every day to ensure your valuation is accurate. So just enter your reg and mileage and there it is. Looks good, doesn't it? It's very wide, which is part of the reason why I think it looks so cool. Proportionally, it's very unique and it is aged so well. So much so that in fact, in 2023, when they did the update, pretty much all they did was replace the grill with this smooth bit of plastic. Job done. You could say that's lazy on Jaguar's part, or a cost-cutting thing. Or you could argue it's because the iPace didn't really need a facelift. It still looks proper fresh, and still arguably the only SUV that you can legit say coupe about and not be completely ashamed of yourself. But the electric car market has changed completely since the iPace first came out, like rapid progress. Back in 2018, if you wanted a fancy electric SUV, your only options were this or the Tesla Model X. And now there are loads of them, like the Audi Q8 Sportback e-tron, the Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron, the BMW iX, the BMW iX3, the Genesis GV60, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, and all the Mercedes EQ stuff, A, B, C, E, and S, and of course, Tesla's best-selling car, this one. See, the market has completely changed, but the iPace has stayed the same. Same battery, same charging speeds, same performance, but the performance is good. Twin electric motors, good for 400 horsepower and almost 700 newton meters of torque. An electric motor on each axle, so good for four wheel drive and a 0 to 62 miles an hour time of 4.8 seconds. I mean, that's not frightening by any stretch. There's an MG4 that's much quicker than that, but it's not bad. However, what's not fast enough is the charging speed. 90 kilowatt hour battery seems sizable, as does the quoted 292 mile range. However, the max charging rate is 100 kilowatts. That's the same as a Vauxhall Corsa Ease. And in fact, the Tesla Model Y charges at more than double that rate. So it's possibly not the best option if you're planning on doing a lot of long distances and will need to be using public charging stations. The thing is, does that matter? Most public rapid charging stations are still 50 to 100 kilowatts, and most of the time, you'll be charging overnight at home, rendering this whole speed conversation a bit like two amateur bass players arguing about who's got the loudest amplifier in their spare room. Range and efficiency, which has always been one of the biggest problems of the iPace, are below average. The 90 kilowatt hour battery is big, but in reality, you can only use 84.7 kilowatt hours and it eats through electrons pretty quickly. 1.5 to 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. That means you'll get somewhere between 130 and 220 miles, depending on how you drive it. I mean, today we've been averaging just under 200, but it is very cold. Still, looks good, doesn't it? 
I mean, I know I keep saying it, but it has aged very, very well. Look how steeply raked the front windscreen is and how shallow the side windows are. And look how short the overhangs are, both at the front and at the rear. And that is because the length of the wheelbase is significantly longer relative to the length of the car. And what that means is very good legroom and actually very good headroom, considering this is a coupe and has this very large glass panoramic roof. You've got door bins, which are not very large, but dual climate control, Isofix on both sides, armrest with cup holders. But the best thing on a day like this, heated seats. As for the boot, hatchback, which is always very useful, and then 656 litres of boot space, which is pretty good. In fact, that's bigger than the Audi e-tron or the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. As for the cabin, I really like it in here. It's got a nice blend of the old school Jaguar sportiness with a hint of futuristic. Screen might be on the small side or certainly compared to the massive tellies that the likes of Tesla put in, but it is very intuitive. And I like the fact that there are actual buttons. It all feels very high quality, certainly compared to a lot of its competitors. But the real magic is on the road. So let's get going. Out of all the electric SUV things that are on the market, this one feels most like a coupe. Almost feels like you're driving a, a Jaguar saloon. You're like hunkered down in the cabin and the dashboard feels very high. But the car itself feels very high. So in fact, your visibility is really very good. Well, that way it is. That way is rubbish. That rear screen is tiny. Definitely seems higher quality than the Tesla Model Y both in the way it looks and the way it's put together and the way it drives, the refinement of it all. I mean, it's really quiet in here. When you put your foot down, it's very calm and measured, no tire scrabble, great pedal feel, the brakes feel good. And although the ride quality is arguably pretty firm, it all still feels very luxurious and comfortable and doesn't roll you about when you're in the corners. So, it bodes well for our time with Jaguar's almost retro electric car, but at the end of the day, it's still an £80,000 EV. This one's closer to 84 k with options, which is the sort of money that gets you plenty of high-quality alternatives. Basically all the electric SUVs I mentioned before, plus some non-SUVs. Or two basic Tesla Model 3s. On the whole, it's a very good car that has really stood the test of time, with very little to complain about other than the cost and the charging speed, both of which aren't complete deal breakers. But you can let me know what you think in the comments below. Meanwhile, make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with this and everything else that we've got going on.